today we are back with another installment of the Look for Less Challenge. Hey there and welcome back. My name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa, where I share high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget, as well as extreme before and after room transformations. If that's something you enjoy, please make sure to hit like and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. Today is the return of the Look for Less Challenge, and if you're not familiar with it, I host it every other month, and I invite YouTubers to join me as we recreate high-end home decor items from high-end stores, but we recreate them for a whole lot less. If you participated, make sure to take the link in my description box to add your videos. And for those of you who did not create a video, you are welcome to watch and see what everyone recreated in their videos simply by clicking that link in my description box and browsing through and checking out everyone's videos. Thank you for everyone who participated this month. I can't wait to see what you guys created. And with that, for this video, I am gonna be recreating several Pottery Barn dupes. Let's get started. So I came across these Modern Farmhouse striped indoor-outdoor pillows at Pottery Barn, and normally they are $49.50 per pillow. I love refreshing my home for the seasons with new pillow cushion covers, and I thought this would be really great, especially since I love a blue, and a bonus, this is actually a non-sewing DIY. Now I find these cushion covers at Hobby Lobby all the time and these are only $5.49. These are a simple beige looking linen type cushion cover and they are a good size and they are also have a zipper back so they're very well made. Now these go on sale for 50% off all the time and that's when I purchased these. So instead of paying $5.50 per cushion cover I only paid $2.75 for each one. Now before I started, I made sure to iron the pillow cover. That way I had a nice, smooth, even surface to work on. Then I used my fabric tape measure to help me find the center and create the large center stripe. I simply used some washi tape that I had on hand for this. After I laid down my center stripe, then I did both smaller stripes on either side of the center one. And I use my fabric tape measure to give me the width between both sets of tape. Since I was going with navy blue, I went with the color Hey Sailor from DIY Paint. And with a stencil brush, I began to apply the paint onto the cushion. DIY paint can go on just fine on fabric as well as your furniture and it is available on my website if you guys wish to try this out. Now what I would do is I would dip the paintbrush into the paint and then I would dab off a little bit of paint in like a plastic container before applying it on to the fabric. And I was just stippling it on. Now you can always use a fabric paint for this as well. Now when applying paint like this on some fabric, it is best to spray it down and wet it down. However, I was afraid that I was going to get bleed through underneath the tape if I did that. So I did not add water before I painted. Now this ended up giving my paint a like unique effect and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Now I'll be honest, it was definitely not an effect I was going for but I thought it was pretty cool how it ended up looking in the end. Now, if you try something like this, make sure that you place cardboard or poster board inside of the pillow cushion cover. That way the paint doesn't transfer on to the other side of your pillow. Then once the paint was completely dry, I took the DIY paint clear wax and with a lint-free cloth, applied it all over my painted areas. And I let this dry overnight. The following day, I removed all of the tape. Then I took a very stiff stencil brush and just wiped all over those painted stripes. I wanted to make sure that I would buff out that wax and just kind of work it in further into that fabric. 
and this gave it a nice glossy sheen by going over it like this. Now this part is optional, but I wanted to make sure that the paint was completely set, so I took it to my heat press. Of course, you can do this with an iron, no problem. You just gotta make sure that you have some parchment paper between the iron and the actual cover. But I just kind of went over it a couple times, making sure that everything was nice and set. That way I didn't have to worry about any bleed through or anything coming off of the pillow cushion cover. And here is how they turned out. So let's see how we did. The original pillow covers were $49.50 a piece with both cushion covers for me, as well as the paint that I had, I probably spent no more than $10 on two of these. And I am using a portion of what it would have cost to get some fabric paint for this project instead of using what I already had on hand. All in all, I am really happy with how these turned out, even though the paint job kind of ended up with a tie-dye kind of effect, but I do think it makes it really unique. And honestly, for the price of recreating them, they were totally worth it. So for this next DIY, we're going to be duping this Pottery Barn Antique Metal Decorative Tray. And it comes in two sizes. The smaller size costs $99, and then the larger one costs $149. Now, I really like this metal look, so I decided to try and recreate it. Now, if you watched my master bathroom makeover video, I shared that I gave an antique metal look to a light fixture. So I decided that I wanted to try to see if that same treatment would work on a tray. So I purchased this tray from a local Goodwill and it only cost me $2.09. And while the tray is not the exact same style as the original one, it's still the same concept. So I had this rust flat black spray paint left over from my light fixture project and I decided to use this since I already had it on hand. This spray paint has pretty good coverage and all I needed to do was give it one coat both on the bottom as well as the top. I made sure the bottom was adequately dry before flipping it over and doing the top section. Next, I took some of DIY Paint's Golden Rule and with a lint-free cloth, I began to apply it all over the tray. The application is really simple. You just rub it on your surface and it gives it a nice golden sheen. I started with the sides and then I worked my way down the flat bottom portion of the tray. Now because I'm going for an antique metal finish, I am not going for perfection when it comes to how this is covering the tray. I wanted to have all of those imperfections and different color proportions throughout the tray like the original Pottery Barn tray. I let it sit overnight so that it would cure. And then the following day, I came back in with the black spray paint again, and I lightly misted over the tray, trying to give it those little black metal specks throughout. And once that was dry, here is how it turned out. Okay, so let's see how we did. The original antique tray from a Pottery Barn was $99 and mine was only $2.09 because the spray paint and the gilding wax was left over from my previous project and I didn't have to spend anything other than for the tray itself. 
Now, while the tray is not the exact same look, because honestly, you just never know what is available to you at thrift stores, I did really love that finish that I was able to achieve with the gilding wax and the black paint. So honestly, you can do this with any shape or size tray that you find. For the third dupe, I found this Sebastian footed planter on the Pottery Barn website for $229 for just the small one. I love how it's raised and I also love how it has that cement look. So I wanted to try and recreate it. So I found these two pieces at my local Goodwill. The candle holder was $4.99, but I was not going to pay for that. And it just so happens that it was 50% off that day on red tags. So I was able to get this for only $2.50. Now the bowl did not have a price at all whatsoever. So the gentleman at the register gave it to me for only 99 cents. Now the first thing I needed to do was give it a good cleaning and what I usually do is I use this alcohol spray that I have on hand and that just gets anything that's sticky off of it because I will be gluing these two pieces together and I need a nice clean surface so that it would adhere properly. Once it was all nice and clean, I applied some E6000 to the underneath part of the bowl. Now the best part about this is that this bowl had a little round ridge on the bottom of it and the candle holder fit perfectly inside that circle. So I press it down and I let it sit overnight. The following day I took some Rust-Oleum primer and I spray painted everything making sure that I removed that slick surface so that I can continue with the rest of my paint job. Then I took some DIY paints letterpress gray. Now this gray I had left over from when I redid the little red buffet and turned it into this beautiful two-tone piece for my dining room. I started stippling it on, but it wasn't giving me the effect I wanted or the look, so I just rubbed everything all over with my little brush. I just kept spreading that paint over and over again. I wanted to use as little gray as possible, so I would go in and pull from the center of the bowl, and then I would apply it on the outside until I didn't have much more to pull from, and then I began getting it from the can. And I did this because I wanted it to be kind of dry, and I wanted it to have streaks so that it would start giving me that concrete texture. After that first layer was dry, I took some of the letterpress gray as well as some of my white swan that I had on hand. And then with a stippling brush, I kind of mixed them at the center, not all the way because I wanted that variation. And then I began just stippling the paint on, leaving uh, some parts untouched, other parts with a little bit of a heavier hand. And I just varied the amount of paint that I applied throughout as well as the different colors. I wanted it to look like a faux cement piece. You can go as heavy handed with the variations. You can change up the color to make them a little bit more darker or use more earthy tones, but I absolutely love doing this technique to get that stone finish. To add even more texture, you can stipple a larger amount of paint and then you can immediately use a hair dryer or a heat gun to dry that paint out really quickly with that texture. And it will give you those rough little slight bumps on the surface of your little footed bowl. And I did this over and over again to kind of build up that texture and it worked beautifully. Once this was dry, I just left it as is. I did not add any wax to it because I wanted to keep that dry, flat, concrete look. And if I would have added any kind of top coat like a wax, then it would have taken that away. 
for the very end I just added a couple of felt pads or feet underneath it so it wouldn't scratch my surface and here is how it turned out. All right, so let's see how it turned out. The original nine inch piece was selling for $229. My piece only cost me $350, which was the price for the $2.50 candlestick, as well as the $1 bowl. The rest of it was leftover paint that I had on hand, and that was it. I got my own a footed bowl for only $350. Well, that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below which one of these high-end dupes was your favorite. The next opportunity to join in for the Look for Less is going to be in July, so stay tuned for that announcement. I usually include the invitation in one of the very first videos of each month. Make sure you stay tuned. I look forward to seeing you guys back here next week with another video. In the meantime, I have more videos right here that you can enjoy. But until then, adios.